Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So I did a video um, about the death of Frank Tyson. And Frank Tyson was a 53-year-old African-American man. He was killed by Canton, Ohio police. And so in response to my video, I received quite a few negative comments from white people and white men in particular. And some of the comments are so bad that TikTok automatically uh, filtered those comments and blocked those comments and they give me the option whether or not to accept the, the comments that they have left because of the nature of them, the offensive nature of those comments. And what I may do is go ahead and approve those comments so people can see the kind of vitriolic comments that these racist people left on my video. So here's what I have to say um, in response to some of these comments. So you had a lot of people basically saying, well, it's uh, Frank Tyson's fault. You know, he's the cause of all this. You had people complaining about him resisting arrest. You had people talking about his criminal record. You had people talking about how there's no proof that the police caused his death. You know, people saying, well, wait for the toxicology report um, and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to take time to respond to some of these comments, you know, step by step. And then also some people accuse me of being a race baiter. So here's what I have to say. First of all, obviously I don't condone people resisting arrest, you know, especially our people, black people, given the history of these police, how they, many of them are looking for any excuse to brutalize and kill a black person person, a black man in particular. So in light of that, I don't encourage people to resist arrest. And that is not what I was saying with my video. Um, you know, so that's the first thing. I think that it's better for you to leave the scene alive and file a complaint later with the police department, with the uh, local DA, or with the federal government. So obviously I don't condone someone resisting arrest, but let's be clear. This is not a situation where Frank Tyson punched an officer. It's not a situation where Frank Tyson pointed a gun at an officer or used some other kind of weapon directed toward an officer. This is not a situation where he kicked an officer or, uh, tried to bite an officer or any of that kind of stuff. This man was trying to prevent the officers from arresting him. Um, and not that that's right or anything, but the fact of the matter is that brother didn't deserve to die. You know, getting into a car accident should not be a capital offense. Even resisting um, police officers the way that he did should not be a capital offense. And the police here, they restrained him. They eventually restrained him, but they, one of the officers put his knee on his brother's neck and back. And Frank Tyson repeatedly told these officers that he could not breathe. So they completely ignored him. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But the fact of the matter is resisting arrest under these particular circumstances should not be a death sentence. Um, and, you know, some people said, well, the police did nothing wrong. Well, this is what the police did wrong. First of all, the police officer had his knee on his brother's neck and back and his brother could not breathe. And he repeatedly said that and the police ignored him. No one in their right mind can say that that is right action on the part of the police after this brother is repeatedly screaming that he cannot breathe. They ignored his pleas. Nobody can say that that is the right thing to do or that the police did nothing wrong under those circumstances, especially after George Floyd, especially after Eric Garner, where you had black men in similar situations that said they could not breathe and the police continued to hold them down and restrain them to the point where they 
died. And then also the Department of Justice warned law enforcement about using similar restraining tactics. They warned them about the possibility of people not being able to breathe. They warned them about the high possibility of people dying under those circumstances. So with all this foreknowledge, there's no way in hell that you can say that the police did nothing wrong unless you have simply have no conscience. And some of you have no conscience. Some of you are like devils. You don't have any conscience. You don't have any soul and you don't care about human life. The other thing that these police did wrong is they waited. After holding this brother down, this brother loses consciousness after pleading with these police. And the police are chit-chatting, joking around. One officer is joking around about uh, being in a bar fight for the first time while this brother is on the ground dying. And then eventually it dawns upon them that um, they need to check on him to see if he's okay. That tells you how how detached these people are. It tells you how how little they cared about this man how little they regard they have for his human life. And that's another example of their disregard for this brother's life is the fact that this brother was crying out that he can't breathe. And one of those officers told him to shut the F up while he was crying out saying that he could not breathe. Um, the other thing is this. You know, some people have talked about like this toxicology report. They, they basically said, well, there's no toxicology report. We can't prove that the police caused his death and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's what I have to say about that. Frank Tyson was breathing before those police started to restrain him. When that officer put his knee on that brother's neck and his back, that's when the brother said that he could not breathe. Obviously, what the police did made it difficult for this brother to breathe. And after the police had restrained him, this brother lost consciousness. You cannot tell me that there is no causal relationship between those two things, between his death and what the police actually did. Now, I believe that a, a, you know, a toxicology report is important, an autopsy is important, but let's not suspend common sense. It is obvious that what the police did at bare minimum is, was a contributing factor to this brother's death. A child can understand that, an imbecile can understand that, but somehow these white people in my comment section, racist white people can't seem to understand that. You know, and the, the thing is, you know, some people made a deal about his past criminal record. And the fact of the matter is, as his attorneys pointed out during their, um, their press conference, Frank Tyson refuted those allegations. He was contesting his conviction there was reason to believe that he was wrongfully convicted. You had people reversing their testimony after the trial, people saying that they were pressured to testify against him. And even if this brother did in fact commit crimes in the past, it has nothing to do with this current situation. Um, the fact of the matter is nobody should be sentenced to death for past crimes that they have already served their time for. And the police certainly shouldn't serve as judge, jury, and executioner for you know, some past criminal history. And they certainly shouldn't uh, serve as judge, jury, and executioner for a man that's not uh, charged, you know, he's not accused of robbing a bank. This is not a situation where this man is accused of violence against somebody. This man got into a car accident. That is not a capital offense. That brother should still be alive today. And the last point I want to touch on 
is the fact that a couple of these white supremacists, and that's what they are, white supremacists, they said that I was race baiting by doing my video, by raising these issues of race. And here's my response to that. Condemning racism is not race baiting. Speaking about actual facts is not race baiting. Considering the fact that this is a black man who was uh, killed by white officers, that is not race baiting. That is dealing with the historical context and the, the circumstances of the situation. After George Floyd, after all these black men have been killed at the hands of the police, after, you know, disproportionate killing of black people by um, police, there's no way in hell you could say that I'm race baiting for simply pointing out the facts. Pointing out the fact that here we have another situation where another black man has been killed by white police. If that was a white man saying that he couldn't breathe, do you think the, those white officers would um, continue to press their knee on that brother, that white man's neck and his back? If that was a white man, do you think they would have waited so long to check on him to see what if he's okay? If that was a white man, of course not. But you are in denial. You are living in a fantasy world where you people don't even think that racism is a, a problem nowadays. But this, this is the mentality that we're dealing with. These are the kind of people that we have to deal with. So those are my thoughts. That is my response to all these people um, and all their, their negative comments on my video. And then, you know, there's some people, again, I'll go back to this point about, um, you know, people saying, well, he shouldn't have resisted arrest and all that kind of stuff and then blaming him. Here's what I have to say about that. Of course, you know, Again, I don't condone people resisting arrest, but I will say this. Um, even when black men and women have been complying with these police, doing everything that these officers say, that doesn't stop them from brutalizing black people. That doesn't stop them from killing black people. There are so many situations where black men and women have been compliant with these police and they have still been victims of police brutality. There are some situations where they didn't even have time to, to comply with the police and they were taken out. Like that brother Tamir Rice playing on a playground, like in a park with a toy gun and the police run up on him and within seconds they kill that young brother, a 12 year old black man, black boy rather. He was not a man, he was a boy gunned down by the police. So that's my response. You know, I'm really interested in hearing from y'all. Tell me what y'all think. Peace.